Okay, so this is like the first third time I'm trying to do this video. Anyway, my name is Megan. Doing this video to correlate with my previous post on my Philadelphia Comic Con experience and my TARDIS cosplay. Let me just tell you, Philadelphia Comic Con, it was a Wizard World Con, was the most amazing time ever. Ever, 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 ever. It was so exciting to see so many people who were excited to see my boyfriend and myself dressed up in our Doctor Who gear, to see so many fellow Whovians, and to have people just generally excited to see us. It was the most amazing experience ever and something I, I didn't think was going to happen. I remember on, the way to the, in our, on our way there, I was like, wouldn't it be so cool if somebody asked us to take our picture? We had about 30 people ask us to take our picture, ask to take our picture with us. We ended up being on a couple different websites. It was amazing. It was amazing. I met Ivy Doom Kitty, who, if you're not familiar with, is considered a professional cosplayer. Amazing. She's got great boobs. Anyway, so I wanted to go into detail about how I made my first cosplay costume, which was the TARDIS. Um, I attempted to type it up. It was really hard to explain and it was really difficult to explain considering I didn't have any pictures to correlate with it on step by step on how I did it and things like that because unfortunately um you know the, the con was three months ago now so you know I'm, I'm trying to go back and give you guys as much detail as I can because I know for myself I tried to find um people who had made a TARDIS cosplay costume before and I had a really hard time finding it and you know I've created this blog to document my journey through cosplay and to help other amateur cosplayers and people who are wanting to start out on, you know, ideas how to do it and stuff like that. So, as I was saying, my TARDIS cosplay. So I started with a really basic TARDIS blue stretchy cotton dress from Forever 21. It was 10 bucks, so I knew if I ruin this, it's not a big deal. $10, not the end of the world. So what I did after that was make the window panes that are, if you're familiar with Doctor Who, which are on the TARDIS. And to do this, I went to the craft store and bought a shit ton of felt. <laughs> I totally overbought, but was worried that if I made a mistake, um, you know, I didn't want to have to go back out at nine o'clock at night, which is when I tend to do my creative things. And I want to have to run out at night and buy more felt. So what I did was Firstly, I pin everything onto fabric clothes before I go sewing, gluing, doing anything on it because that way if it's pinned you can always move it and fix it. If it's glued or sewed it's more difficult to change what you already have. So I used a little bit darker blue than the dress because I didn't have the dress as at the time I was um, picking up the felt which I would suggest doing. I would suggest bringing whatever fabric. Um, you plan on using if you're trying to correlate colors to the craft store or wherever you're getting uh, fabric from. So I used a darker blue felt fabric as the window, which to then I cut out and hot glued little white um, felt strips so that way, you know, it, it gave the effect of the window. Um, going back now, I probably wouldn't have hot glued the white strips on. I don't know if you can tell, but you can kind of see where the glue was. There's a little bit darker areas to the white felt. I wasn't expecting that it would um, end up showing through. So you can always do a really simple running or basting stitch along the white instead of hot glue. It's going to take a little bit more time, but it might look a little bit more clean, a little bit nicer. Also, so after figuring out where I wanted the windows to be on the dress, after pinning and trying it on and moving it around on my body, I did a really basic stitch. You don't have to be a sewer how to, to know how to do this. I taught my boyfriend who's never even seen a sewing needle before how to do a super basic stitch. Thread your needle, tie a knot at the end, and you will literally just slip up and down, and up and down, and up and down. And I'll secure it so that way you're not having to worry about glue. So I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see a little bit there. My stitch is running along the window. I did some in the center along the um, middle of the window so that way it was secure all the way around. Easiest step, also really satisfying as my first step in my cosplay adventure. So there's the dress 
the bottom, you can see nothing on the back, really simple. So my next step was I got um, black felt because on the TARDIS, I really should have a picture to show you guys as reference, sorry, next video I'll do better. Um, so he's black felt because on the, along the TARDIS there is a little black strip that says police box and in the center it says public call. So I wanted to have that on the dress. And to uh, look, work with mo a woman's body, I did it on my waistline right underneath my bust. So to do this, I used, and you can see a picture of the full costume on my previous post. One second, my throat is super dry. Iced tea for days. So to do this, this is my finished project. Police, public call, box. So I actually ended up making this a Velcro kind of belt because it was getting it exceedingly difficult to get it exactly right sewing wise. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna Velcro it so that way I can take it on and off, move it around if I'm finding it to be uncomfortable. So I cut out three strips of black felt sew them together again very similar basic stitch you can go, go youtube videos on how to do simple stitches ask your mom ask your grandma ask a man in your family who knows how to sew we're not going to subject to gender stereotypes so for all the words to get a clean bold easy read from across the con floor i actually used just sticky felt letters for the police box phrases, police, box, police, I used um, sparkly white words because, you know, everything needs a little sparkle. And the words on the actual TARDIS are white. So I just, they're sticky, peeled the back, stick them on. And then I just did a couple little stitches, like three in each letter, just to secure it on there a little bit better because it does move on the fabric. So you can see my stitches in the back. Just kind of kept going. And then for public call, again, same technique. I actually didn't stitch these ones down and they've stayed pretty well. You can always just wiggle them around if they get out of place and they've stuck really well considering I made this three months ago. Um, again, box the same way I did police. And then I used Velcro. I actually put two pieces of the hard Velcro so that way if I ate a big lunch that day, I can wide it in and out or make it tighter. And then, <coughs> pardon me, the fuzzy side on the other. And then you close it and you have a belt. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, nice and simple, anybody can do it. Now, the more difficult part and more cosplay-esque of my cosplay costume that I did was my headband. Now the TARDIS has a little lantern at the top so I wanted to recreate that. Doing so, I used little square dowel rods and I found at the craft store this like really thin wooden material which I used to make the triangle and the base. <coughs> Pardon me guys. And I also found some blue sparkly tool which was like 60 cents. Blue paint and um, Martha Stewart's glitter paint which is amazing because it goes over um, any other color paint that you've already used and dried and it comes out just as the glitter and not like a weird sheen that you sometimes get from other acrylic paints. So first things first was I measured all my little pieces out. So first I cut the wooden dowel pieces and then I did some cross bars just for support so that way it wasn't wobbly because it is a little on the taller side. <clears throat> then I and by I, I mean my boyfriend made this part because it involves basic geometry, which are skills that I don't have. And I'm okay with saying that. Which, so he cut out little triangles of the flatter wood piece, glued them all together, and then we glued this part, the center part, and the triangle part together. Hot glue, man's best friend. From there, we whittled a little base. It's kind of hard to see now that it's attached to the headband. But in here I have a 
sorry guys, excuse me. I have a fake little votive light, which I left using the same flat wood uh, fabric from up here. We use from the bottom, so that way the um, votive had something to sit on. So you can see I left the switch, so that way I could switch it on and off. And you can see it actually lights up, Flicks, flickers a little bit, and the sparkle gives it a nice little shine. And I also painted the votive blue so that way it wasn't a white votive sticking in the blue lantern. And then from there, after painting the entire wooden section, I wrapped it in tulle just to make it look a little bit more clean cut, a little sparkly blue tulle, nice. From there, again, found this headband at the craft store, 99 cents. Hot glued it to the headband. And voila! With this, I had a little blue clutch bag can't be without my phone to take pictures of everybody else there and just blue flats it was super simple I did it all in two nights which honestly wasn't satisfying now that I've become I want to say a cosplayer just you know because I'm really just starting out um, so but it was a great first simple project to do that was really satisfying and so so exciting to we're at a Comic Con, super comfortable, super fun, and everybody who was there absolutely loved it. So, thank you guys so much for watching my first video. I'll be doing updates on uh, my blog for my next Comic Con, which is the New York City Comic Con at the Javits Center in Manhattan, and that is October 11th of this fall. And I and myself will be boy. Uh, I myself, my boyfriend and myself, will be cosplaying Alice in Wonderland, I'll be Alice, and he's going to be cosplaying the White Rabbit. So, so far I have begun starting that and I will update you guys probably tomorrow or the next day on where I'm going with the Alice cosplay and how much of a leap it is from this one, from the TARDIS cosplay to now. Um, there will be no sto store bought products, it's all handmade. Um, so it'll be really exciting. So stay tuned for updates on the Alice cosplay and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this is an okay video for my first one. Have a great day guys.